Hello and welcome to my updated smart home review and tour. Much has changed since my last video in 2021. I've integrated some new devices and I've replaced some that didn't quite work out as expected. And that happens. You know, you, you use something, buy something, it just doesn't work the way you thought it would. Let's kick things off by exploring my perception of what a smart home is and setting a few rules for how I believe a smart home should be. A smart home transcends the simplicity of just merely controlling individual devices from an app on your phone. You get five devices from five manufacturers, you don't wanna to have to use five apps. That's the whole point of a smart home platform. It allows you to control multiple devices from multiple manufacturers and then allows you to automate them into scenes and automations. Scenes are things you control, multiple things at once on demand. Automations are things that happen uh, based on an event or a sensor or you leave or you come home or something like that. My smart home platform of choice is Apple Home. I've also got uh, Amazon's Echoes and I've got Google Home Hubs. But for example, controlling my going upstairs scene, which controls multiple devices, turns lights off, uh, downstairs, lights the path to go upstairs, sets the alarm, lowers the shades, and does all kinds of things. It's just Apple Home just makes that so much better. On the subject of smart speakers, speaking of things I've given up, I've given up on Apple's HomePods. Like HomePods and HomePod minis just didn't work out for me. The sound quality is amazing, for music they're great, but as a home hub, the performance and reliability just hasn't been there for me. And I've been using uh, Apple uh, HomePods almost since day one and HomePod minis definitely since day one. But anyway, uh, I've given up on them. They just don't work the way they should. Now I've also stated in the past that in order to have a great smart home, you need a great network to be the backbone of it. So that's Wi-Fi and that's hardwired and it's ethernet. It's just a great network that's reliable. So I have also switched out all my Linksys uh, Velop nodes, all my Linksys mesh system to a brand new Unify um, network access points, even cameras um, by uh, Ubiquiti. So Unify is gold standard when it comes to people recommending a solid network and devices. And they really didn't cost any more than getting a good um, name brand mesh system. So it's not like you're spending a bunch of money and they're not that hard to configure. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, and also live by the rule that if it has an ethernet port, it is plugged in. So Wi-Fi when necessary, but ethernet is my, um, my go-to go for anything that could be plugged in, which is also why I like things that have a hub that can be plugged into ethernet. I also took this opportunity to upgrade my uh, network storage, Drobo, a company that's going out of business or gone out of business. I replaced that with a Synology network attached storage system, which is a NAS. One essential principle I abide by is that every device in my smart home needs to have a manual way to control it as well. So if it's a light switch, it needs a light switch on the wall that you can just walk up to and press it. I don't want to always have to pull out my phone to control something. I don't want to always have to use a voice command to control something. Sometimes it's just simpler just to walk over and press a button. So smart home things should be automatable and, and controlled by scenes, but they should also be whenever you wanna just control something manually, be able to walk over, press a button and control it manually. Okay, so let's get into the tour by starting at the front door. I've swapped out my Logitech doorbell for a Google Nest Wired 2 doorbell, even though Google doesn't support or na natively support Apple Home and probably never will, the third-party Starling Hub smoothly integrates all Google Nest products into Apple Home. And I've been using that, you know, the Starling Hub longer than I've been using the doorbell and it's been working great. I've also switched all my August Wi-Fi entry locks with the new Slag and Code Plus locks. These locks natively not only support Apple Home, but they're one of the first ones in the U.S. to become available uh, to Apple actually support Apple Home Key so that I can unlock or lock doors simply by waving my iPhone or waving my Apple Watch. Even if my own iPhone is a dead battery, I can still open it, open the door just by waving my phone. Now it still has a keypad and all that other stuff and you can use a physical key, but I love the fact that it supports Apple Home, uh, Apple Home Key, I should say, 
and that's one of my favorite features for these locks. So I replaced all the locks with those. This year, I accomplished one of my goals, which is upgrading every single light switch in the house to Lutron Caseta. I started this, was actually what started my entry into smart homes, which was the Lutron Caseta smart switch for my outside light. And then I've just been replacing them year after year, a few at a time, um, over the years to get to the point to where now every light switch in my house, every fan controller, every motion detector is, I should say occupancy detector, is uh, Lutron Caseta. And why? Because they're simply, again, the gold standard for reliability. Just like I talked about Unify being the gold standard for networks, Lutron Caseta has been the most reliable smart home product I have had since 2016. That's when I first started building my smart home. They always work, <laughs> they never fail. And again, that manual control of being able to walk over to a switch. Now also, since I started applying the, or upgrading these switches, Lutron has updated the Lutron Caseta switches themselves to be a better looking switch with the new Lutron uh, Caseta Diva and Lutron Caseta Claro switch. So the Diva is the dimmer, the Claro is just the on off switch. And both of those work just like any other toggle switch you've ever used over all the decades of switches. So they implemented a new design and these work great, they integrate great, they come in different colors. So uh, if you're looking for a rock solid, reliable light switch that can be controlled anywhere in the world on any platform, not just Apple Home, works with Amazon, works with Google, works with just about everything, it's Lutron Cassette. However, when it comes to color lights, I'm still rocking hue and I've implemented and added more hue lights around the house. Now, same thing, Hue lights are usually bulbs or, lights or light strips, but I want manual controls for those as well. And they have a wireless dimmer and tap controller that you can actually dial up the intensity of the lights uh, in a room or in a scene that way as well. So uh, for color lights, it's still Hue is my favorite. And again, the same thing, that rock, si rock solid reliability using their hub, which is plugged into Ethernet. For temperature regulation, I upgraded to the newer Ecobee Smart Thermostat uh, Premium. This one has that great stainless steel look. However, the functionality really didn't change. It's the same thing as my previous Ecobee. So this was probably an upgrade I could have skipped, but I love the look of it. Now, it also at the time was the only one with the better UI. However, since then they've rolled that new UI for Ecobee out to the older Ecobee devices. So there's really not a need to upgrade your Ecobee thermostat if you have a working Ecobee thermostat. Uh, the Ecobee thermostat is as a nice, as the new premium is a nice aesthetic upgrade, but that's about it. It doesn't really do anything that the old one didn't do. Now it does have, I, should say, I shouldn't say that, it does have an air quality sensor. Okay, so it does do one more thing that the old one didn't do. But that's about it. I have progressively been adding more Acara devices this year. And recently they introduced the new FP2 presence sensor that can trigger scenes and automations based on not only the presence or, or occupancy of a room, but even down to the individual locations in a room. So if you sit on a certain chair, you lay on a bed, you, you walk past a certain area of the house, it will trigger that automation based on that. My main uh, floor iRobot robotic vacuums have also been replaced. I only had one in, on each floor, but that one's been replaced by the Roborock, the Roborock S7 Max 5 Ultra. Beyond just merely vacuuming, this device also has mopping capabilities with an impressive uh, array of AI navigation features and it just simply blows away the iRobot vacuum I had before in terms of just not bumping into stuff and navigating around. And plus it's got some cool camera features on it as well. You can even see the area in the app that it's cleaning remotely from the camera, which is kind of a novelty. It's kind of cool. Additionally, I've added a pair of AirVersa thread-based air purifiers um, for first floor, second floor. Uh, to my collection, they operate extremely quietly and uh, sync seamlessly with Apple Home as well as being thread based. So they're not on Wi-Fi, they're not tying up a Wi-Fi spot. This, mar this year also marked a significant uh, event where I replaced all my 
um, blinds with Smart Shades by uh, Serena, which is a Lutron company. Um, now, my previous blinds were automated w from a company called Tilt, formerly, formerly My Smart Blind. However, they, nat they never natively worked in Apple Home. In order to get them in Apple Home, I had to use a HomeBridge plugin, and because of a change on their end, on their servers for login, that HomeBridge plugin stopped working and still hasn't been updated to be fixed. So that was the last straw. I started upgrading everything to Serena. I replaced all the ones on the, on the first floor, and they're amazing. Not only are they beautiful to look at, quiet to run, quality, they work every single time, they're native to Apple Home, and they work directly with the Lutron Caseta, um, uh, Lutron Caseta Smart Bridge that I already have, and their wireless Pico remotes give me that manual control. They also exude premium quality. They're just a better shade. The announcement by MyQ that uh, they were discontinuing their MyQ hub that supported Apple Home made me look at other solutions. So um, Maris is the company that a lot of people that are in the community love for their Apple Home uh, smart garage door openers. So I bought their little hub, which is just sitting on top of a garage door opener in my garage, and it supports Apple Home and controlling both doors. So with that, I get to add my garage doors back into my scenes and automations, and it's been rock solid and reliable since day one. Now, while we're in the garage, uh, I also talked about this in the last video a couple years back that I was going to add battery storage to my solar system. So I got solar energy, but you know, a lot of times I overproduce the energy that I'll use in a day. So now that storage is happening to use that excess energy at night and mainly keeping a reserve anytime there's a power outage, my home stays on. And that happened recently. It was kind of eerie looking outside and knowing my house is completely lit, everything's working, and the entire neighborhood was off. So I felt great <laughs> that I had power, felt bad for my neighbor. Speaking of replacing things, I've also started swapping out uh, my security cameras. So I have had a variety of different cameras from Ring and Nest and Logitech and just all these different mixtures of cameras using different cloud-based storages and so forth and so on. And I decided since I've switched to Unify for the network, they also make Unify Protect cameras and a network video recorder, NVR, that stores all the footage locally from all the cameras. So I'm replacing cameras where I can with PoE, power over ethernet cameras, and I'm also replacing Wi-Fi cameras where I can't run ethernet uh, with those as well. So everything records to one spot, I don't have to pay a cloud subscription anymore for any of these other cameras. I get the privacy of it being recorded in my home and via a HomeBridge plugin, the bonus is they also work in HomeKit or Apple Home. So with HomeKit Secure Video, it does store footage encrypted in the cloud so only you can see it. But that way I have it both ways. I have it stored locally and backed up to the cloud. But I also get uh, their great apps on iOS, iPadOS, and even tvOS so that I can view the cameras on any device, including Apple TV. And so far, their Apple TV app has been the best camera app I have had for security cameras in a long time. Nest made a great app, but then when Google took over, it stopped working with the newer camera, it was just a mess. So now with this app, everything works great, and everything works great on all platforms, all devices, and I can just see it and know that all my footage is stored locally. On the subject of security, uh, each of my doors has a, is equipped with a contact sensor to alert me when a door or gate is left open. Um, either, and again, I have a variety of these from Ring, Ecobee, and Acara. Since my alarm systems ring, it made sense to put their outdoor sensors on my gates. And I have uh, Ecobee sensors for the inside doors as well as Ring. And um, also Acara. I'm starting to like their sensors as well since it works with their ethernet connected hub and doesn't require anything else. So everything's working in Apple Home, either natively or via a HomeBridge plugin in the case of a ring. Now you may ask, what about matter? In 2023, it's impossible to overlook the shift towards matter. Matter aspires to set a universal standard for smart home devices, enhancing compatibility, and simplifying 
the smart home ecosystem for both consumers and developers. So what is matter? From now on, buying a device and is it certified for Apple Home? Is it certified for Amazon? Is it certified for Google? As long as it's certified for matter, it works. Now, I also don't believe that it makes sense to upgrade existing working devices in your home to matter. Even if a matter update comes out, I could care less. Because why take the chance of breaking something that's working great? Where I think matter will matter <laughs> is when you want to get a device that traditionally hasn't been available for your smart home platform. So for example, if you wanted to go out and get a, a new light from Govee, and Govee traditionally never supported Apple Home, well now they've got a Matter uh, smart uh, light strip, and they're increasing their product line to be more Matter compatible. So that way I can now get that light strip added to Apple Home natively because of the Matter support. Another one that I've done this with is SwitchBot. SwitchBot makes a curtain controller that I've gotten one, on one of my windows, and that curtain controller was never natively Apple Home, but now because of the Matter support in their, their Home Hub 2, um, it, it incorporates into Apple Home natively, um, just like any other Apple Home native device. So as you can see, a smart home isn't about gimmicks or gadgets. It's about seamlessly integrating technology into your daily life for better comfort, efficiency, and enjoyment. It's about shaping a lifestyle that's attuned to you. So you can find out more from the links for everything that I put or talked about today or shown today in the description below. And feel free to leave any questions you may have. Thanks for checking out this video. Thanks for checking out my smart home. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye everybody.